Hi guys, my name is Dimitar and welcome to another session of Blender for Concept and Design Architecture. In this video, we're going to be looking at topologies and subdivision surface modeling, which essentially shows how to create some of these forms and some much, much better stuff, which I'm sure you'll come up with afterwards. So let's start by just first putting the cursor in the center. Oh, and let me turn on my screen display. So let's add a plane. Let's go into edit mode. Select the two vertices. And now let's just pull them up. Okay, doesn't look very interesting until we add a modifier called subdivision surface. And you can see the first iteration doesn't look so much, but we can change the number of subdivisions. Let's make it four. Aha! Uh -huh. So if we pull these guys up a little bit more, we start to get a pretty interesting shape. It's essentially a minimal surface, like the Pringle chips. So essentially subdivision modeling is a halfway between nerves modeling and mesh modeling, meaning that we have a cage, which you see here, and when we modify it, based on various factors, we get a smooth mesh result. So it can be very useful for a series of concept designs and modeling exercises. Okay, so we saw how we created this one. So let's then go on to the next one here. Let's just move this right here. Oh, and to change the display, you see how this here, we can, it's sort of linear, it's flat, we can see each face, whereas here it looks smooth. All we need to do is press the space bar and start typing smooth, shade smooth. And now it's smooth. Now just also make sure that you change the render to the same number of subdivisions as you have for the view, otherwise your render is going to be of lesser quality. Now what this does actually, so you can see here, it subdivides the mesh. So here's the original mesh, well, here's the original mesh, one subdivision, two subdivisions, three and four. Okay, so now let's go on to the next subdivision. I'll just start with a new one, create a plane. We'll do the exact same thing here, we'll just move these vertices up, or add the subdivision surface so we see what we're doing. I'll accent it a little more. And now we'll subdivide the mesh. Let's just bring this down here. So if we select everything, we can open up the toolbar here and click subdivide. So now you see with the subdivision, it looks a little bit different than this mesh that th does. Essentially, the more subdivisions we have, the less smooth it looks because it has it's it's a, it, it it it's it's almost like a fit through curve to specific points. In this case, it's a fit through surface. And if we add a loop cut here, you can see it sort of gets smoother especially if we drag the loop cut near the edge. For now, we won't worry about the loop cut. Okay, so now, let's just grab these four vertices here and drag them up. And you can see that how we're starting to get something that actually looks somewhere between those two. And we can play further with it changing some of those vertices, dragging this middle bit here as well, changing the proportions, and so on. Okay. So we learn how to do this one. And this one, these two are essentially very, very related. In fact, you can see what the mesh looks like. I just played a little bit more with them to get that sort of shape. Alright, so if we go in here and I just slightly pull this out or maybe we just scale these two vertices and we pull 
these guys a little bit higher now you see we get something very similar to what we had before we can fix the tail but we don't need to worry about that All right so next bit is this one here which is even simpler if we add a mesh again we pull the corners up subdivision surface pull them more We subdivide our mesh. I think we need to have it selected with everything. All right. And all I've done in this one is just pull the middle point up or down. And you can see sort of how it reacts. It creates an average between those two points. And separately, if we, if we scale these you can see this, the sort of shapes we get okay now I want to show you a really cool way to create something that you may or may not know um, let's see where where is it where is it here it is so it's called the Volvo Pavilion Volvo Pavilion It's a pretty cool project. It's all based, it's actually built, and it has solar cells inside of all of these. But the edge is essentially a minimal surface, which is quite easy to create, or at least a version of it. So let's go ahead and create it now. So if we start with an empty surface again, scale it up a little bit more. In fact, let's be a bit more precise. I think that one is about six by six meters, maybe. So we'll put in the proper dimensions. Okay, so now if we just subdivide the mesh, uh, okay, I'm pressing the wrong button here. Subdivide the mesh. And now all we need to do is drag these four points up. And let's say we drag him up 10 units, 10 meters. Uh, that may be too much. Let's drag him six. So we can do this. Six. And let's drag the midpoint to three. Okay. And now if we press subdivision surface, and we divide it enough. And I guess it did need to go much higher than that. But let's pull these out and pull these up. And you sort of see the kind of effect that we're starting to get here. Now if we scale those, I think in their case they scale them in. That's one way which actually I don't think is too close to what they were doing. Uh, I think what they were doing is very similar. Just scale this a little bit. Subdivide the mesh. And let's drag instead of those midpoints, the corner points. Let's see now. And if we take our midpoint now up again not quite like it but very similar be happy if you share in the comments how you've achieved something quite similar to the Volvo Pavilion but essentially this is subdivision surface modeling which is very could become very very powerful I think if we rotate this no that's all right we keep it and you can see this for example here it could be used for arches for many things and again if you want to we can shade it smooth change the resolution so we make it even smoother and so on now 
Really cool thing about that is once we have this mesh that we're sort of happy with, let's say we want to do some marches and let's sort of maybe blow them up in just one direction. Let's blow them up a little bit. Okay, this is kind of cool. All right. So how do we develop it further now? We can start to grow, grow bleh, excuse me. <laughs> we can start to draw some more loop cuts, which as you see, we have a direct result in the mesh. So let me first duplicate this mesh here. And if we enable this button, it becomes very much like the Maya tree mode, if you're familiar with it. Essentially, we, we don't see the cage mesh, we see the final mesh result. Alright, so in here, now if I create a loop, let's say here, and here, and we want these loops actually to become quite sharp. So let's move this slightly up. To make stuff sharp within subdivision modeling, stuff, <laughs> to make edges sharp, uh, we, we, there's something called edge crease and there's a couple of ways you can find it like everything else in Blender or I guess any other program for that matter is um, if you go to the edges menu which you can get by pressing ctrl E and it gives everything that has to do with edges I believe you can go to mesh edges and it's the exact same menu and this is what we're looking for shift crease uh, where did it go? I don't know. Oh, I don't have an edge selected, I just have the vertex. So let's select this edge and this edge. Mesh, edges, crease, and let's put one. So you can see that it starts to become much, much sharper. And we can do this for a number of various occasions and if we go into this mesh and we move that point the sharpness changes according to it. And let's say we wanted this spine to actually be quite sharp as well or even better. How about we select it, we bevel it we can do that by typing bevel and it's going to give us some weird results, that's all good we can sort of ignore them for now because what we have here, if you don't have the tools panel, just press T for it to come up we can directly edit the previous command that we've worked with so I'll just change this to percent make it something really small, 0.02 one and yeah, it's gotten quite extreme hasn't it <laughs> that's all right what we'll do then is sort of move our edges down a little bit to get closer to what we want so do you see what happened here when we introduced two edges to where there was one the accenting towards the vertices became more intense. Alright, so let's just move this point a little bit up as well. Okay, so now what I actually wanted to show is if we select this edge and if you alt click it, it selects the whole loop. So and shift alt click to select the second one. Now shift E, type 1. And what happened here? I think we need to scale them out a little bit. Well, we have one version of an edge that's quite sharp. I believe they're very close together and that's why they look a bit funky. So let's just move this one over a little bit. Move this one over a little bit. There you go. So now we have a kind of a flat spine that does kind of all kinds of stuff. Some which may not be too pleasant. So 
if we wanted to, if we realize we don't like this to be that sharp anymore, if we press Shift E and type minus one, gets rid of the whole effect of that. And now if we wanna, we can also drag this edge maybe a little bit out, which as you can see, it again reduces the effect that that has. Let's drag this edge out. And what about making these edges? How about we make this one sharp, see what the effect is. Uh -huh. It becomes very sort of rectilinear, which is quite nice because you can see we can easily get an effect where we have some smooth and some sharp angles as well. Great, and this is what the actual mesh looks like, which is further modifiable. That's it for this first series of subdivision mo <laughs> That is it for this first version of subdivision surface modeling. Thank you and see you next time.